Crime is on the rise. Meanwhile, across our major cities, President Biden is expected to lay out an anti-crime strategy this week as the administration plans for a tumultuous summer. Here's what White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said about the president's plan. The president feels uh, a lot, a great deal of the crime we're seeing as a result of gun violence. Uh, ex you can expect he'll speak to that uh, and his commitment to continuing to address gun violence and gun safety uh, in the country. Uh, and certainly, uh, a long time has passed uh, since the uh, crime bill in 94. He's spoken himself to uh, differences, things he would stand by, things he would might do differently. Uh, but I wouldn't see this as a response to that as much as a uh, conveying to the American people what he's going to do now. Now, uh, to help address uh, the rising crime we've seen over the last year and a half. Joining me right now is New York Congressman, Homeland Security Committee ranking member John Katko. Also joining the conversation all morning long this morning is Dagan McDowell and Nancy Tangler. Congressman, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. How do you come out with an anti-crime plan when you know that you've been pushing defunding the police? For so long, it's, well, it's just it, it behooves one uh, when you hear Jen Psaki there saying we've had a rise in crime over the last year and a half. Yeah, no kidding, because we're defunding the police and the police are not uh, are afraid to do what they're supposed to be doing with all of this reaction against them. Yeah, I, it seems to me that they haven't done their homework. Uh, if they did what I did last Friday, for example. And went up and met with law enforcement agencies across the country. You would uh, you get a different feel. I went to New York City last weekend where crime is off the hook, and they cut the New York City Police Department by one six. The morale is in the toilet. They're down 500 cops or 500 detectives. Uh, random shootings are taking place every day. Uh, stray bullets are hitting children on a regular basis, and they expect by the end of the year at least a thousand more people will be a shot in New York City alone. And if you want to contribute, I attribute it to the guns, which is a tired old routine, instead of good uh, good policing, That's this is a type of nonsense you're going to get out of the White House. If you really think about it, um, we need to refund police, not defund them. And look what's going on in Portland, for example. Sh uh, shootings are up over 100 percent. Murders are up 566 percent since they uh, since they started the defund police movement. And they're also creating laws that handcuff law enforcement and, and, and uh, they're not doing anything to help them. So if they think that they're just going to uh, pass a few gun, gun laws and everything's going to be fine, they're absolutely not in touch with, with reality of what's going on across our country. I mean, it's just extraordinary. You know, defund the police, uh, wide open borders, the elimination of cash, ca cash bail, uh, letting all of these people out of Rikers Island because they want to redo uh, the, the, the prison population at a, at a much smaller capacity. How did they think this was going to play out? Uh, they didn't. I think they just think that they can vilify police because of the actions of a few and not take into account that the vast majority of police officers, and I've worked side by side with them for over two decades before coming to Congress, the vast majority of police officers do an incredibly brave and great job every single day. Instead of vilifying the ones that are doing a bad job, let's figure out how we can make uh, police officers and police departments as a whole better. Think about it. How can you retrain police when you defund them? How can you uh, implement new policies and get them ready for those new policies on the streets when you when you cut their funding? It, it doesn't work. And there, there are uh, short-sighted policies of vilifying police, passing bad laws and defunding them is why we are where we are right now. And we're going to fix that. Of course. Of course it is. And, you know, I wonder if they're going to have any mea culpas to say, well, maybe we had, you know, too aggressive commentary on, on the police. Maybe we should not have uh, pushed this defunding the police, which Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is still pushing even till this day as we see these numbers, like you just said, skyrocketing murder uh, levels. Congressman, I want to get your take on economics while we're talking as well, because I know that there is this big uh, debate about a, an infrastructure infrastructure package. President Biden wants to raise taxes pretty substantially. Do you think he's going to be able to get that through? Do you think we're going to end up doing an infrastructure package on hard infrastructure, perhaps around $1 trillion, and then Biden's going to push through his higher taxes in another package later on in the summer? Or will the New York representatives uh, get their way on the left who want a SALT deduction back in there in the tax plan? 
Well, I, you're talking about two different things. I think infrastructure in and of itself is something that uh, I've been working on uh, through my work with the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus. And we've kind of provided uh, much of the framework that the, sen the group of senators are working on right now. And what, what that package is, is simply and only hard infrastructure. It's broadband. It's, it's all the other things we need, roads and bridges and all the nuts and bolts things that we've neglected for so very long in this country. And there's an awful lot of pay-fors that are available through unused funds from our, uh, the CARES Act spending and some of the other things we did during the pandemic. There's also revenue that we always get from the highway fund. So we can get a package that's funded. Um, and I think the proof is in the pudding. When you cut taxes, the economy booms. When you uh, raise taxes, uh, businesses go overseas and elsewhere. This is not the time to force businesses overseas. Coming out of a once a hundred year pandemic, raising taxes is probably the worst possible thing you could do. So, um, you know, again, it's just like the police department, they vilify, they're vilifying success in the business world. We, we've got, we've got to understand that that's the lifeblood of jobs that we create for uh, men and women in this great country. Yeah. And we, raising taxes is going to hurt their ability to have those jobs. Right. But what I'm trying to understand is whether or not Biden is going to be able to get this through, because I know that some of your colleagues from New York yeah. and New Jersey on the Democrat side want the SALT deduction to be back in there. So if they are pushing for the SALT deduction to be back in there and Bernie Sanders is saying, well, I'm not going to sign anything with the SALT deduction back in there, does he get stuck and having an inability to get these higher taxes through a second package? That's why I'm bringing up the SALT situation, because it could be the one lever that stops Biden from get it, being able to push through higher taxes, because you've got the New Yorkers unwilling to go along with that. So that's why I'm talking about both of these issues. So, again, do you believe yeah. that he's going to be able to get higher taxes through a reconciliation package, or does he not have the support because of the SALT deduction? I think it's going to be a real struggle for him uh, for the reasons you stated, but also because you think about it, there's an awful lot of the moderate Democrats that are feeling like uh, things are slipping away from them and they're very concerned about reelection. And I think it, it would make it almost impossible for them to re get reelected and to keep the House if they raise taxes. And that's just a fact. And I think the biggest impediment that they're going to face is moderate Democrats who realize that raising taxes under this scenario isn't, go isn't going to work. And so I think all the, all the reasons you stated, but I think more practically, the, the political component is that uh, the moderate Democrats, and there's a substantial number of them, are feeling the heat. And they know the worst thing you can do is face your constituents after telling them you've raised taxes. And uh, that's why I think they're going to have a tougher yeah. road with that. Really important topics that we're discussing uh, this morning in your neck of the woods, New York, uh, having to do with crime as mm -hmm. well as higher taxes. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much, Congressman John Thanks Patco, for having me. Joining us all on right. all of that. All right. We'll see you soon, sir. Thank you.